one of the things I always do is to announce to everybody that this will be recorded and it will be placed on the Autism Society's website. So if anybody asks a question or shares any personal health information, this is a public forum and there's no expectation of privacy. Um, so if you'd like to ask questions or ways to do it, chat and we will try to keep your name um, as we will we'll keep your name out of it or hopefully you could too. So that's it. it any, this is a public forum and there's no expectation of privacy with public health or private health information. So with that being said, you guys go ahead and take it from there. Okay, so hi everyone. Um, I just wanted to frame yeah. it a little bit. In that, um, so I'm a parent, I have an adult son and he uh, really struggled with um, getting his teeth cleaned, even just sitting in the chair. And we had two or three different places we went before I finally found somebody that could successfully clean his teeth. And um, what happened was I was talking to a mom that I met in a waiting room. We spent a lot of time in waiting rooms. And uh, she's, she had a little boy who had Down syndrome. And she recommended this place to me. And she said, what you want to do is you want to ask for this specific dental hygienist. And so I called and I talked to the dental hygienist and explained, you know, we'd not been successful other places. And I told her what, you know, it, what she needed to do. She could just take a little extra time and tell my son what she was going to do before she did it and show up on the instruments that he would be okay. But if she grabbed him or yelled at him, it was, it was going to be a problem. And she said, I treat all of my patients with respect and I don't have trouble. And I was like, sold. <laughs> and that, and she did, she said, and she said, I will book him the last, she asked me if mornings or afternoons are better. I said morning. She said, I'll give him the last appointment before my lunch break. And then if it takes longer, there won't be somebody waiting to come in. So that's my, my dentist story. Um, I feel like I know a lot of people have their children um, have to be uh, sedated and that uh, it, that's very expensive and difficult to do and dangerous, not always not dangerous, but um, there are risks. There's always, yeah. Always so, um, so anyway, I really appreciate you guys and what you're doing and uh, we have a great partnership with Marquette. I always love to have presenters on for Marquette. So I'll let you guys take it away. Awesome. Well, thank you for that. Um, so yeah, we're the Special Care Dentistry Association at Marquette. And we're just going to introduce ourselves. Who is controlling like the... I'm controlling it. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. So I'm Maddie. I'm the one in the middle on this picture. And I grew up in Greendale, Wisconsin, which is very close to Marquette. Um, I went to undergrad at Concordia University in Mequon, so I didn't go very far and then ended up at Marquette. And um, I kind of went into the dental field because I knew I wanted to become um, some kind of healthcare provider and dentistry really allowed me to have flexibility with my future life. And I, ended, I, wanted, I do want to have a family at some point down the line. So I was able to, um, from just talking to people, that sounded like a good profession that provided both of those. And kind of as I got into dental school, I volunteered at GG's and have kind of fallen in love with the Special Care Dentistry Association and working with um, these patients. So yeah, that's a little bit about me. All right, my name's Annalise. I'm also a third year dental student at Marquette's Dental School. I was born and raised in a Northwest suburb of Chicago. It's called Farrington. And I attended Marquette University as well um, in both undergrad and dental school and majored in biomedical sciences. I've always kind of had a passion for helping children with special health care needs. So growing up in Barrington, I was surrounded by a community that provided a super supportive and nurturing home and specifically for these children. I was lucky and fortunate enough to watch Gigi's Playhouse grow to what it is today because the founders are actually from my hometown and I know the family personally and these children just have so much to offer and so we hope that with this association and um, 
with becoming dentists in the future that we're able to make a difference one day in helping to provide dental homes for all these individuals. Uh, I guess Hi. I'll, okay, Caroline, you go ahead. I'll go after. <laughs> okay, sorry about that. Okay. Uh, my name is Caroline. I'm on the bottom right of the slide that you're looking at. I as well am a D3 student and I like Annalise attended Marquette for undergrad as well as dental school. I'm actually from Atlanta. So I grew up there and just moved here about six years ago for dental school and the whole program. Um, that being said, I kind of have a tie to special care dentistry because my sister has been a special education teacher for a while. So I'm kind of familiar with everything she talks about as the struggles of her students. And it is really interesting to hear the stories of all her students' families. And dentistry was one thing that had come up in um, a family speaking to her and she had actually talked to me about it and was asking about resources and things. So it's been kind of interesting to be able to tie in what I've learned from her and kind of the dental side of things. So like Anneli said, we're hoping to be able to bridge the gap between what families are experiencing that we're unaware of and we can try to kind of provide more resources and make things a little easier. And I'm Christina. You can call me Tina as well if you want. I'm the picture in the top right. And I am a second year student at Marquette's Dental School. I'm originally from New Berlin, Wisconsin, so was able to stay in the state of Wisconsin, which was really nice. I did my undergrad at Carroll University in Waukesha, Wisconsin, and didn't figure out I wanted to be a dentist until my third year of undergrad. And it was really exciting. I went on a volunteer trip and shadowed a dentist performing surgery and just thought it was really interesting to be able to educate people about how important oral health is. And then once I got to Marquette, I found SCDA, Special Care Dentistry Association. And I just love inclusivity and making everybody feel comfortable and being able to do that for anyone, whether they have special needs or not is a win in my book. Um, and then I just wanted to mention, if anyone has questions, feel free to interrupt. You don't have to wait till the end. This can kind of be an open discussion. Um, to start off, we're just gonna start off with a short video that was made by some previous students who are a part of SCDA. Hopefully this plays. <laughs> represents just like what an appointment would look like at Marquette. Hi, I'm Jackie. Welcome to your appointment today. If you'd like to have a seat, your student will be with in just a few minutes, okay? Hi, thanks for coming in. I'm Luke. I'll be your student dentist today. Nice to meet you. If you want to follow me back, we'll get you seated. All right, you can follow me back. Good morning. I'm Janet. Welcome to Marquette. You can have a seat right here for me. Let's get a bib on you. And the first thing we'll start with is your blood pressure.
blood pressure looks great. I'm going to grab Dr. Demigala for a start check. We'll be right back. All right, doctor's here to give us our start check. Hello, I'm Dr. Domagala. I am director of the clinic. We're so happy to see you here today. Uh, it looks like you are ready to get started and I will check on you soon. Thank you, doctor. All right, let's sit you back and take a look at those teeth. did a great job with your exam today. Thanks for coming in. Your teeth look wonderful. I'll walk you out. Follow me. And as we're walking you out, we'll stop at the window and make your next appointment to visit you in six months. Okay, so that was just, that's our ACC clinic. So it stands for our advanced care clinic. This is one of the clinics, press back. Um, this is one of our clinics at the dental school that currently sees patients with special health care needs. Um, and so that is just the look of that clinic and kind of how an appointment would go as we work towards that with um, the program that we're gonna talk about here today. Um, and then I just wanted to kind of bring up this slide. So S SCDA, which stands for a Special Care Dentistry Association, is a national chapter, um, and they do have a website. This is their website. There are some resources on there that um, if you guys want to take a look around, there's just educational resources, um, kind of about everything. And then I was just doing some searching on there and found this special care dentist referral. And I typed in Milwaukee, expecting things to come up and nothing came up. So that's one of the projects that we're working on at Marquette here. Um, I know you guys have a directory, but we are also hoping to get a good list of dentists in the area um, and even throughout Wisconsin that you know could take on these patients because like you had mentioned before, not everyone has the patience or is really equipped with the knowledge to do so. So this is one of the projects that we're working towards. Um, and then Marquette is a nationally ranked chapter and we're pretty proud of that just because it acknowledges us that we, um, we're doing good things for the community and really wanna help. Um, so yeah. Okay, so what is SCDA and what do we stand for? So the, again, like Maddie said, it stands for our Special Care Dentistry Association. And the focus of our club is to promote advocacy for all patients because everyone deserves to have an access to dental care. And not only is there this lack of access for health care for these patients, but there are actually a lack of providers able to see these patients, whether it's resources, um, kind of an understanding as to um, how to properly take care of these um, patients. So with this program at our school, we hope that um, we're able to educate our student population to better serve um, these, these patients who are in need. And upon graduation, that we can add to the number of providers that are currently practicing and continue to raise that number so that all patients can be seen. Um, like I said, expanding our knowledge about patients with special health care needs so that we can, be be what can better become well-rounded dentists who are able to treat any patient who walks in the door. We currently have students participating from all four of our classes at the dental school. So again, we're trying to get um, this education and these resources out throughout the dental school. And we currently have 10 subcommittees within our association. So academic and leadership, there's awareness and outreach, which what is what we are. 
community service, our dental tolerance, fundraising, legislative, newsletter, research, social, and our national student liaison. So with our academic and leadership, these uh, students have put on different caregiver panels. Um, we've done sign language classes and their focus has been on giving a helpful tip for the week. So they, for example, this past week we had a little presentation and the tip of the week was our person first language. So recognizing someone first as a person before their disability. So for example, we would say my patient with special health care needs. Um, community service has been connecting with organizations throughout the greater Milwaukee area, um, how to better educate people on oral hygiene and dentistry, and this is seen throughout the community at different events. Our legislative is focused on helping members kind of stay up to date on current legislative issues surrounding um, patients with special health care needs. Uh, research has been presenting new literature on relevance on topics relevant to special health care needs. And our student national liaison has been in connection with um, chapters nationwide with uh, and exchanging ideas and incorporating ways to better improve oral hygiene in um, our patients with health, special health care needs. So some of the events that we have participated at We've been able to get in, so Night to Shine, which was a really fun event that I did two years ago. We had a group of students basically buddy up with um, a child with a special health care need, and we attended a prom night and did a lot of dancing, a lot of laughing, and just kind of building those relationships around the community. Our special smiles event, uh, we did, we screened all the special Olympic athletes uh, for any dental problems and also educating them on some oral hygiene. Gigi's Playhouse, we've grown a very strong relationship with over the past couple of years. We have volunteers go there weekly and kind of help lead different sessions. For example, we've done um, a book club, we've helped with the cooking classes, and so we really hope to continue uh, to grow that relationship and, um, and continue to work with the, uh, the people that are there. We have been coaching for Special Olympics. So that has been from volleyball to basketball, soccer, track and field, volleyball. Um, and then again, the oral hygiene instruction at, for Special Olympics. We also have a tendency to set up oral hygiene tables at various events. Um, in the greater Milwaukee area, just educating people um, kind of all the time about the importance of oral hygiene. And then we had a, an event called Coos for Kids. So it was a Challenger League bowling. And um, this is an event for children with special health care needs or who are severely medically compromised. And each child works with a volunteer to help um, during the bowling event and stuff. And it's no cost to families. So these are just a few of the ways that we've been able to get involved in the community, build relationships, kind of get the word out about our program here at Marquette. So we are the Awareness and Outreach Subcommittee, as Annalise explained earlier. Um, Annalise, Maddie, and I are the co-chairs of this committee. And Caroline is the... Um, current chair of the dental tolerance program, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Our main goals as the awareness and outreach committee is to raise awareness for our chapter, uh, basically through social media and oral hygiene tabling, like Annalise mentioned earlier. And we also wanna help recruit participants for our dental tolerance program. So we also made an Instagram account to help with social media awareness and that is our handle so if you type that into instagram you'll be able to find our page at mu underscore dental tolerance and we're just trying to start like special care sunday posts and mentioning experiences from past events uh, whether it be programs or volunteering events and just more res resources and information um, to give more awareness to our committee.
And so, like I mentioned, mentioned before, we have the dental tolerance uh, program here. And the main mission is to desensitize children with special needs. And we really like to focus on both perceptual and sensory needs. And we're just trying to help ease the transition to a dental office. Caroline, are you here? Yes, okay, so our dental tolerance program, just to kind of give you a brief overview of what it's like. Um, so basically when you decide you wanna be a part of the program, your child will be assigned to dental students. And those dental students will be making around once a month visits to your home. But again, that's totally changes based on the family. Some families need twice a month, some really only can handle meeting every other month or something like that. We never want it to be a burden, just whatever's comfortable with the family. Um, usually the first visit is at the home, just to kind of get your child introduced to the students and go through kind of, you know, the basic introduction. A lot of times no dental talk or even work or anything like that is done that time. It's just more or less to get introduced. And from there is when we kind of start the program, usually before meeting as well, we also try to make an effort to make sure we kind of get every bit of information we can as to what needs, what various methods we think will work best with the child, as well as just kind of getting to know any behaviors that might be beneficial. So it's really hard to kind of pinpoint an exact thing that we do in each meeting because with each child, it is so different. But basically, we just kind of individualize therapies that can best suit your child's needs and get them progressing towards when they could visit an office. And the end goal is to eventually be at a dental tolerance day, which is at the school. If you want to go ahead and click to the next one. Um, so this is our flyer for our program. We've put them out kind of all over and anyone that's interested, let us know, even in the chat, if you want to put an email or anything like that. And we're happy to send out the flyer to anyone. And it just gives a little brief introduction into our program, as well as at the bottom there, you can see it has a phone number and an email that you can call, text, or email with any questions you have regarding the program. Um, so just to kind of give you a before and after. So before COVID, the ideal goal, like I said, was coming to your home, the two meetings, um, the first one being kind of the introduction, and then we start into all the individualized therapies, whether that's, you know, starting from even just being able to let me count your teeth and, you know, just kind of introduction, introductory things. Um, and culminating with the dental tolerance day where the children would be brought to the school. They're given a chance to kind of interact with the air and water syringe and all the kind of different instruments just to get used to the feel, the sounds, everything that a dental office would have. As opposed to. Yeah, I mean, it's a little bit later. Oh, sorry. Um, as opposed to now how things are changing a little bit, which um, we'll touch on later. But just to give you kind of a brief overview, that's what it looks like. And like I said, the individualized therapies are so different for every family, um, but we do try to kind of keep some things the same. We start with materials like gloves and gowns, getting used to seeing students in scrubs and shining a light in their mouth, things like that. And we kind of work our way up to being able to put a mirror in your mouth and look at your teeth and even as much as trying an x-ray in your mouth, things like that. So we'll talk a little later about how they've changed, but that's kind of how things were prior to COVID. Yeah, and one of the most important things that we like to establish with each of the participants is just gaining trust. I feel like trust has been the biggest problem in coming to a dental office, introducing new people, new places, new sounds. Um, so having trust between you and the patient is extremely important. So just those initial interactions with the child are very important to us. And that's why, Carol, as Caroline mentioned, 
that we don't just jump right into the, the treatment and the therapy and we kind of get to know them. We establish that relationship um, because, and if they trust us, then they will be a lot more inclined to open their mouth for us, to let them count their teeth. And just increasing that trust is also going to increase their, their comfort with what we're asking them to do and asking them to try just all in order to bring them one day into an actual clinic setting and to have them experience um, a real practice. So some testimonies from previous students who have been part of the program, um, just to kind of get to touch on how we as dental students feel in participating in the program. It's been very eye-opening for a bunch of different people and we learn so much from, from going to these home visits and learning the different types of therapies and how to interact and, and kind of have the, the child progress in the way that we want to see them. So someone said it was incredible coming back month after month, being able to see such progress with my own eyes. And that, that comes from trust. That comes from that level of comfort between the student and the, the child and that relationship that they've built. Um, and that's really fun to be able to see that progress. Another person said, it was really cool to see the progress that the child I was paired with made. The first few visits, he wouldn't even open his mouth for us, but by the end, we were able to use dental instruments in his mouth, practice taking x-rays, and help him with brushing and flossing. I'm sure that his transition to private practice will be a lot smoother now that he has had exposure to the dental environment. And that's kind of what it all comes down to, is easing this transition into a private practice and making that easier for both parents and for the child, because we know it's it can be a little bit stressful, I'm sure, for the parents, um, just seeing their child upset and not wanting to kind of just go with the um, go with the the process. And it can be a daunting task to to bring them to these visits because you might not know how they act and or how they're going to act and respond to different um, types of stimulus and like the lights, the sound, it, it can be a lot going on at an office. So we like to start them at um, an easier spot for them and just having them open their mouths. And then by the end, it like, like the student said, practice having x-rays in their mouth and even brushing and flossing, that's, that's been huge. And the last person said, I could tell that the visits we made to our patient's home made him feel more comfortable and more trusting of us. At first, I think our gloves, glasses, masks, and coats were a little intimidating, but after a few visits, he expected us to show up like that. It was much more at ease with the protective gear we wore. We even liked trying on, he even liked trying on the gloves and masks himself. So you can just see um, the progress that these students have been able to make with these patients and and have fun with it. And the, and the participants are are very happy when, um, when they trust the student that they're with. So that's really important. Um, Maddie? I know we touched on kind of what goes on as far as things we do to um, make the children become desensitized. And so that tell, show, do, which I know Emily focused on at the beginning, um, we kind of showed our patients everything and practiced on each other before attempting it on the patient. And that just really shows that um, it shows the, the children that, you know, this is what we're doing. They can see that and then they become more trustworthy. Um, another student said, we came to our patient's house in scrubs every time. So they realized that dentists are people too. Um, seeing people in scrubs, I know, can just kind of be fearful for anyone or even in that white coat that can be fearful because you get an association um, that kind of gets programmed in your head. And then they also said we used everyday dental things like gloves, masks, smear, floss, and incorporated it into play. So these, um, these patients are able to learn that, you know, these things, we're not trying to hurt them. We're trying to help care for them um, and kind of be a positive association with those. And then the last students said uh, we brought gloves, floss, toothbrush, mirror, probe, x-ray, bite pieces, and coloring sheets. We would show him how to brush, then have him brush, then we counted his teeth slowly, building up to the whole mouth. Then we counted using the probe, and then we practiced taking x-rays. And that's a big step. Even having patients open their mouth can be 
um, a challenge. And so being able to establish that basis before getting into a dental office, I think would help a lot of parents and help a lot of um, dentists in the area maybe take on more patients because they aren't having these challenges like they, they might encounter otherwise. And just to touch on one more thing that Emily kind of talked about at the beginning is the importance of having patience. And when you see a little bit of progress, that is one of the most important things. And you don't want to, you don't want to push them too far. Um, Emily mentioned that they had their appointment last, the dentist had them last at their last appointment. So they didn't have to rush through things. They could walk through and show the the child, everything that they were using and explain everything and not, and not push them at a speed that they weren't comfortable with, because at that point, the child's going to shut down and you're going to take two steps back instead of taking a step forward. So patience and um, just taking the time that you need and the time that's appropriate for each child is very important and something that we like to focus on. Um, is Caroline here? No. Okay, so, sorry, so kind of what now? So Caroline had touched on what the program was looking like before COVID, and obviously things have changed quite a bit since then. We're hoping that in potentially in 2021 or sometime next year, whether that be spring or fall, that we can kind of start back up with the normal home visits, um, but that's not looking very promising. So what we've been working on now is developing a website. And so this website is going to have resources that are continuously updated. Um, this will aid in replacing the home visits for the time being. So basically what we're going to do on the website is post videos of different um, procedures that we would walk through with the kids. Um, we would have almost like a Word document kind of explaining to parents how to introduce new things to their child, how to talk about a certain instrument, how to have them open their mouth, um, and just little things like that. And we're hoping to have this website go live here in the next uh, couple weeks. We're working on our uh, kind of introduction promotional video um, October 10th that weekend. And again, with the educational videos, we're hoping to kind of have a sequence of steps that we can have parents at home be watching and instead of in kind of replacing us students in the home visits. So they would be able to see these videos and work with their child and kind of hopefully see that progress without us actually being there. Um, as I said, so the videos for parents and the different appointments that the students would normally have been doing. So where exactly to start, what to look for and how to introduce things to their ch child and explain exactly what they're doing because terminology with children is very, very important in getting the message through. They don't understand things like adults do. So we have to use phrases and things that kind of make sense for them and are a little more comforting and so this is still kind of in the works, but we're hoping that in the next couple of weeks, we will start posting those videos and um, hopefully, hopefully continuing this program in 2021. But for the time being, we're really hoping that this um, continues to educate parents and continues to, to promote the program in a positive light and to still see progress with, with these children. So finally, these are the resources that we offer as a committee. Um, like we mentioned, we have the website that is still being edited with the videos and just more information that is going to be available to everybody about the program and just in general. And we're also in the process of creating a list of providers in the greater Milwaukee area with this program or just offering services to kids with special needs in general. And we will keep you all posted once this list of, is finalized. We also have our educational flyer about the dental tolerance program, which we showed earlier. And I'm sure that will be on the website as well once that goes live. And we also have our dental tolerance email, which is mudentaltolerance at gmail.com. If you're interested, if you have any questions at all, please feel free to email us. 
Again, Caroline Lynch is our current chair for the Dental Tolerance Program. And we also have access as the Aware, Awareness and Outreach Committee as well. So again, the Awareness and Outreach Committee and the Dental Tolerance Program Committee works side by side too. So if you email with any questions, someone will be emailing you back and we'll hopefully be able to help you soon. Or if you know anyone that is interested and would be or benefit from this program, feel free to have them email that. that email is linked to Caroline's, um, Caroline will receive all the, the emails from that. So we can open it up to any questions. I don't know if anyone has anything that they wanna ask us. If not. So I might've missed this, but what is your program doing during the pandemic? So we're, so what we're doing now is we're in the works of developing this website. And we're hoping that the we are we can post videos basically um, like a weekly um, appointment. So instead of having the the students go to the home and conduct that home visit, we're hoping that we can post different appointment sequences and just the steps that we hope parents can kind of go through with their child on their own. Just because with the COVID restrictions, we don't want to be going into homes and it's not comfortable for people. So we're hoping to just kind of mock those same um, home visits, but via this website and posting videos and just aiding in the explanations and creating word documents, just kind of sequencing exactly what the videos are showing. So we hope that that's going to be going live soon. We are filming um, a promotional video October 10th. So very shortly after that. I don't know if we talked about this too. I think we were hoping to like be able to send out some like maybe plastic mirrors. Yeah. If parents were interested um, or just not really maybe gloves because I know everyone doesn't have access to that. So that was. Well, I, I don't have a question, guys, but this is Brian Kaspar from Gemini. First, I'm absolutely blown away by how cool this program is. We travel all around the country and even world, and I've never, I've just, I've never seen a program like this, and it's fantastic, and it's a godsend to the parents. Um, so, congrats on doing it. And also, uh, just I would like to offer whatever help we can do. Um, we. Nicholas uh, will post, we have a video for a whole session from waiting room through teeth cleaning that details the protective equipment, it details the tools that are used in that. This is what we do is we film procedures to prime kids for any kind of, I mean, we have things with all types of medical conditions, all types of, we have 150,000 videos. So in any way we could help, we would even volunteer to, you know, edit some of them for you, give you ideas. We have a whole content team that could talk about um, how we present, we've been doing it for 13 years. What's the best way to present, how to simplify it. Anyway, we would love to be able to help in any way possible. I just love what you're doing. Yeah, that'd be awesome. Thank you so much. And I just posted one of our, we, one of our videos that we had posted on YouTube about, um, going to the dentist and it's kind of detailing, um, the sensory overload and, and how to set still and kind of what it's like with, what, what, how you're supposed to react to having people in your mouth and dealing around kind of how that feels, what that looks like um, and seeing a little kid, you know, it's kind of the, you, you see a six-year-old go through it and go, eh, I guess it's not that bad. Okay. Yeah. This one, this one's aimed at that, that population, that four to eight, 10 year old. Um, it seems to have worked with a lot of our people, but this one's on YouTube. So, so we can share it, but we would be happy to, you know, give you all the insights we've had in, in doing this for a while because it's um it can get tricky yeah that would be that would be awesome and i don't know if um this was really highlighted but the end goal of the visits to the um going to the houses was in the spring i think there was something called tolerance day at marquette so the clinic i think it was closed and they would bring um these these children in and they wouldn't do any really dental work but just get them the next step into a dental office um and that was that was the goal from there and then from there i think they could be seen at the school or they could try to find an outside provider um but with covid we're not really sure kind of what that's going to look like this year so 
I'm just keeping heads up for that, I guess. Yeah. No, I, I understood that. I, I thought that was clear that the, I love that tolerance day and that this was really just priming and prepping the children for that tolerance day as, as their first dental experience to be followed by private practice. Yeah, and it's been it, in the past, it's been super successful. And the students who have participated in the program and gone to these home visits have honestly been blown away with how quickly that they can transition transition these children from the home into the clinic and have them be very comfortable in progressing with um, opening their mouth and just kind of what they can what they can get them to do and it was yeah so we're kind of bummed out that the tolerance day last year or this past spring um, couldn't happen but hoping in the future that we can organize something that could be more socially distanced and stuff because that was it was a good thing to be able to bring them into the school. Yep. Well, thank you guys so much for sharing this. This is a wonderful program. We're lucky to have it in Milwaukee. Yeah, of course. All right. Are there any other questions on the chat or? Not nope. that I think, uh... We have the YouTube link. Okay. Well. Thank you. I think then, then Emily, we just wrap it up and it will be on the website. Yep. Yeah. So okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Everyone.